Hello and welcome back to the lab. Today on the bench we have a giant hole over here and a 7854 right here. In my previous video where we did the lab check-in of this unit, I discovered that it is woefully out of cal and does need some work. To get started with that, with all the scope calibrations that I've done and things like that in the past, this is the most complicated 7000 series scope that I have ever run into by, by tech. Um, there is a lot to it. You actually have to do a digital amplifier, things like that. This section of the scope that is usually um, pretty empty in the 7000 series is chock full of cards, which we're going to see here in a little bit. Uh, this particular unit was, um, this one did work. I have three, three total. One is a parts unit because it got destroyed in shipping. The other two are going to be salvageable and we're going to have to repair the second one because it got kind of wrecked in shipping too, but not nearly as bad as the, as what I'd call unit two. Um, but one of the main problems with these scopes before I really got started doing alignments and calibrations on these is these suffer from ROM rot. Uh, what that is is the ROM chips that are in there just start losing bits over time, things like that. It's just an age. So I hadn't yet gotten my solution for that yet. I do have a calibration card, which I will link in the description below, that I also need to build to do a true alignment on this scope. That's a project that is ongoing. I am still waiting for parts. But that is set to go. So today we're going to take an we're going to take a small step with help of the Vintage Tech Museum. If viewers of my channel are unfamiliar with them, definitely go check them out. They are uh, a fantastic resource, and a lot of the guys that run the Vintage Tech Museum can also be found on the TechScopes group e email list. They came up with a ROM card solution which I have purchased a couple of these. Um, there was only five available at the recording of this video because the chips are in short supply, and these are UV erasable flash chips, uh, which have the firmware now. The supply is limited, but definitely keep an eye out for when they come up again because we're going to install this in there and see if our error light goes away. The other cool part about this ROM board is there's a diagnostic program which draws a digital picture on the on the graticule, so you can align the digital section of the scope to the analog section of the scope. You do the analog first, then you do the digital. This makes so I don't have to use the keyboard to type in, so I don't have to type in the program to draw those figures. It also comes with a special calibration package where this sits over these buttons, and during the calibration routine, they do different things. So when you buy one of the ROM boards from the museum, you get the ROM board with the diagnostic firmware and the calibration um, overlay. So because I have two scopes that I'm eventually going to get up and running, I did purchase two ROM boards, but uh, the third one is going to be a parts unit. So... Unfortunately, the back got caved in by the shipping company. But let's get this in and let's get this turned on and uh, start it up. I'm kind of excited about this one. Okay, here we are on the back of the 7854. This is where the external keyboard attaches. I'm going to pop this off just to make it moving around the bench a little bit easier. I don't want to ding up this cable. Right here, there's an identifier of which version of the scope you have. The earlier version, which is what this one is, has two battery posts back here. The later version has nothing back there. Um, when I ordered the boards from the Tech Museum, they were kind enough to ask for my serial number and make sure I get the appropriate firmware for the scope that I have. But it does turn out both of mine were the early version. So no problems there. This one is also an Option 2D unit. So this particular one does have the RAM module 
built in uh, the the expanded memory. So I definitely want to get this one up and running. The other scope that I have, one of them is a second option 2D. The other one is a non-option 2D. The one that was a non-option 2D, this back panel was caved in. It took a really big hit in shipping back here. Busted the fan blades. Just smashed this all into the front of the scope. Hit it hard enough where it bent the frame. So considerable amount of damage. But we need to be on this side because this is where the boards are. So I'm going to turn it sideways and then we'll go from there. Okay, I have brought you all along. Okay, as with all tech stuff, pretty easy to open. Couple of screws. And we pop... Oh, nope, that's the wrong side. So, this is the vertical section and everything like that. Vertical and horizontal section. So, that is actually the wrong side. This thing is not light. There's a lot of gravity in this. Especially doing that off angle with the camera in the way. All right. Second time, we're sure, because there's only two options. And digital boards. So up here with the 7854 is the microprocessor section. This is where all the digital circuits are. The readout um, where the uh, storage is generated, all of that stuff, that's all generated from up here. I have to take this frame out to get at the ROM board, which is A31 right here. So let's take this cover off. One did not want to come out. And there we go. Okay, to get the ROM card out, we do need to remove the GPIB board, and then that'll just flip over here. Okay, to remove the ROM board, we or the GPIB board, we just pull up on these tabs and out it comes. Flip this over here and on the old ROM board which is right here. Obviously the power is completely unplugged. The scope is down. Make sure everything's off. Don't pull these boards out when the scope is on um, for sure. But there is the old ROM board. And of course the era is the wonderful TI sockets of everything. Fortunately, there's not many sockets, at least now most of those don't look socketed. So that will be a good thing when it comes time for restoration. I'm going to save the ROM board. Um, I'm going to save the ROM board just in case. So we'll toss this in a static bag and protect it. This is definitely one of the more um, complex scopes that Tech made. Now, the installation notes that on the dip switches, it, to make sure that the dip switches are all set to the off position. Now, on this particular one, the off position is the farthest forward. This is the key way on the ROM board. It needs to go down that way, so the ROM board actually goes in this way into the scope. There's going to be a lot of capacitors in here when I do a rest restoration on this one. We are going to have quite a few recapping, uh, quite a bit of recapping to do. And the ROM board just pops in like that. Okay, now we'll add the GPIB board back in. Carefuling. And there we go. Uh, now it is time to redo the shielding. Need to switch the uh, bit over to Posi Drive because these are Posi Drive screws. Contrary to popular belief, Posi Drive and Phillips are not the same. Okay, this can be kind of interesting to uh, get seated because 
these cutouts for the boards, it keeps the boards from flopping around in there. So there's little notches here, here, and here that the uh, top of the cards have to sit in to get this thing to sit down correctly. Okay, I have now applied power to the unit. Uh, I have not turned it on yet, so we're going to see what happens together. I'm going to give it a little bit of a readout just so we see what happens. And here we go. This is slower than the, because it would have been up by now. Oh, there we go. Hey, look. Self-test complete. That's a good sign. And I do not have an error light anymore, so I'd imagine we had some ROM faults on here already. So that's a, uh, that's fantastic, actually. I am really digging that. And hey, yeah, I got trace. Trace is good. The pots are dirty. I have to clean those, but I haven't done that. I haven't done a restoration in this yet, so that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, let's check the diagnostic. Okay, so I have the diagnostic firmware enabled. The power's off. We're going to turn the power on. You do want to not switch the firmware when the power is. Um, not switch the firmware when the power is applied. So we will go to, okay, we have tube, so let's hit, um, let's see, stored vector, we should get, ah, there it is, vector timing. So that doesn't look too bad, but the analog version is um, not that great. So the diagnostic firmware is working. I get I get graticules, I get dots, I get vectors. Yep. Uh, we have a ramp. Yep. So very cool. The diagnostic firmware is working, and everything is good to go. So this will very much aid in my alignment of the scope. Now, this is lined up pretty good. The problem is the analog section's off. So it looks like on this one, the digital section's okay, but the analog section is busted. Uh, if I do character, I can fill the screen with characters. And yeah, LED turns everything on which is fine, and runs the buzzer. Yeah, so, okay, so the diagnostic firmware is working very, very well. I did not have a doubt there I was going to work. This is more user edification than function testing. Um, so, we are one step closer to calibrating and aligning my 7854. This one's going to be interesting. The, um, you guys will have to let me know in the comments if you want to see me split this up into multiple videos or do one giant video where the alignment is start to finish, do everything we can. Um, I'll have to get that uh, alignment board built and tested, which is not a problem there. So let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see if you'd like me to tackle the calibration on this. Uh, all at once or split it up into sections in a different video. I have no idea how long that um, video is going to be, but it is going to be two full alignments of the scope because I have to do the analog section, then I have to do the digital section. So that one has, a ten has the possibility of being a pretty long one. Uh, these little... Um, these are actually 3D printed, as you can see or here. Um, these are, uh, you can get these on Thingverse. They just kind of pop on. They're actually great for viewing a scope. Uh, and it turns out all the 7000 series have the same, um, have the same dimensions of the viewer. So uh, grab these on Thingverse. If not, I believe I have links for them. If anybody needs them, I can send some links. And 
I will link in the calibration board align or the um, part one of the calibration board in the video below. So thanks again for swinging by. And this looks uh, we are now one step closer to getting this 7854 completely off the ground and restored. So I will see everyone in the next video.